It's your boy Conservist34. Today I'm going to step aside from my musical talk and get into something that hits close to home for me. And for those of you who don't know, I grew up playing hockey here in the state of Connecticut. Um, actually, my first ever hockey game was 24 years ago this week, October 30th, 1996. Here in Connecticut, I saw the Hartford Whalers. They play the New York Islanders. And I was growing in love with the sport of hockey. And this was the first professional sport I'd ever seen live and it just grew my interest. You flash forward through the years and, and you know, went to the last Whalers game a couple, you know, in April of 97, been to tons of minor league games, started playing youth hockey in 1997, 98, um, the fall of 97. I, I worked my way up from C teams. I was behind because I started at, at the age of seven, uh, where that's late for hockey Long story short, I got my way to our high school hockey team, which was a top ten team. My last two, my last two years, we were in the top ten pretty much every week. And you know, my sophomore year, right? This is the year that I, I, I my first year where I make the varsity team. I come into a situation where me personally, I was bullied because of the color of my skin by a teammate who, prior to this showed nothing of a concern of, of, of be, having hateful speech or being racist towards anyone. And I walked in as a sophomore. He was a senior and I was bullied. And I was afraid to tell my parents. I was afraid to tell my coaches, you know, you're the only black guy on the team. You don't know. And this is my, again, my first year on the team. I don't know the coaches believe. I don't know what my, I knew some of my teammates, but I was getting to know others. But long story short, I was fortunate enough where once these things came to light at a pasta party that we had, my teammates stepped in. The older teammates on that team said, look, we're friends of this person. But they told my coach, you know, they told my coach, this is not acceptable. My coach agreed wholeheartedly. And before even going to the school, banned this person from our team, kicked them off the team. He, he just he had a zero tolerance policy for racism. And I appreciate that to, to this day. Um, but long story short, I was afraid. I was a shy sophomore who just wanted to be on the team, who was, who was working its, my way up the depth chart from the fourth line to the third line and even had a, a, just a small article on, you know, some of my play towards the end of a game. And I say all that to say that what we are going to talk about today with Mitchell Miller bullying Isaiah Meyer Crothers, I have been there. And the person who bullied me has never publicly apologized, never apologized on the side, never said anything um, of any remorse. Um, in person to me. And um, it hurts. And I, I, I was able to recover from I have a great support system, including my coaches to this day, who, um, you know, have been a huge Im impact on my life. And my family, my father and my mother um, are just great role models for me. And I was able to recover from it. And I don't feel like I'm no longer a victim, but I know what it's like to be a victim. And I say all this again to say that Mitchell Miller this is a kid who was 14 years old at the time, and he abused his peer, who had a developmental disability, who was a black student, and along racial lines, said things along with certain racial slurs and insensitive remarks. He didn't just stop there, right? He abused and assaulted this kid, Isaiah Meyer Crothers. And he also made this kid, you know, essentially eat candy that was put in places where you can look it up online. I'm not going to go into it, but it just, it was brutal reading what, what, what was done. This is not just a, oh, he said one insensitive remark to a, a, a woman or, or to a black person or to someone from a different sexual orientation, which still isn't right. I'm not saying that's right. This wasn't just one insensitive remark. This was a series of pre-planned pre strategic ways to, to really do brutal things to a person. And that's what people need to understand because what's going on now is you're always going to have this on social media. Oh, yeah, people are too sensitive. And, oh, why doesn't he, he deserves a second chance? He deserves, uh, you know, he would deserve a second chance if he was more remorseful of his, what he did wrong. I mean, Isaiah had to get tested for different sexual transmitted diseases because this, where this thing was put, the candy, which you go look it up, he could have caught diseases. And 
it's interesting because hockey has always been a sport that downs other sports. There's a lot of people in the culture of hockey that are jealous. I call them hockey guy. And I'm a ho- I've been a hockey fan again since 95 when I was five years old. First game was 24 years ago to this day. I'm a, I'm a diehard hockey fan. I'm a season ticket holder to a college hockey team out here in Connecticut. Um, I go to lots of games when I can, at least one game a year for the National Hockey League. And I have Center Ice or NHL.TV where I can stream a lot of games. But hockey has a culture where they like to down other cultures for character issues. Oh, this person did this. This person did that. But that's not how hockey players are. Now we have a hockey player with a huge character issue who comes into the draft and never apologized to his victim personally. And now people are saying, oh, he deserves a second chance. The team who toted, the Arizona Coyotes toted that hockey is for everyone. And they, they have a, a Latino owner and they promoted a Latino to a CEO position and hockey is for everyone. And they draft somebody who has never publicly apologized. The irony here is the only thing that this player did, Mitchell Miller, After being found on different charges in juvenile court, he sends letters to every NHL team. So there's at the time, there's 31 NHL teams. Obviously, the the, the Kraken are are not an official official team when he's going through this process. But he sends letters to every single team saying he was sorry. He goes and tries to play, you know, with the different scout, all this stuff. Oh, I'm sorry. And he has his coaches say, oh, his coach, he's such a great guy off the ice and he motivates people. Right. But he has never apologized to the victim personally. And when you read, if you you go online and read some of these articles, the mother of Isaiah said, we never got anything. There was no public apology. There was no verbal apology. No one knocked on the door of this family. And, 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 you know, Mitchell never said, hey, I'm sorry for what I did. It was a court forced written apology that just. When the court forces you to apologize, how sincere is that, right? My brother went through the same thing. He played hockey, and he's a darker skin than I am. And and guys, you know, thankfully, USA Hockey did take a lot of measures against players who said racially insensitive things and and pushed in in my brother, just hit him because he was black, said the N-word to him and hit him. That that I've seen these forced apologies, and, you know, it is a, a step that should, hey, you know, it's better than nothing, but these things aren't sincere. Because my brother would face this, you know, face, you know, he got written apologies and still face other adversities and hurdles much worse than I did. And he's four years younger than me. Um, it's very sad to see this is, you know, where we're at. But this is I guess this is the reality of, of our world. Right. And the other thing with hockey is with this whole character issues, there are black players. Right. Who not even they have never assaulted anyone. They've never been arrested. They've never done anything wrong per se by the means of the law. But because they're a little bit flashy, because they have a lot of high energy, and they still pass to their teammates, they're still good teammates. But because they're a little, they think people think they're feeling themselves too much. They get criticized in the media. They're called problems. Akeem Alou talks about things that he went through from his own coaches, and he's labeled as a problem. So when black players come into hockey and bring a little bit more flair and style and flavor, they are ostracized. But hockey is for everyone. When when a black player comes into the the league and is racial slurs and coaches say racially motivated things against them and then they speak out against it, they're trying to cash in. I, I don't this is what is wrong with hockey culture. And, you know, I have to say I appreciate those in this culture of hockey who actually have taken a stand or taken a knee to stand up for the injustices. We've seen players come forward and say, look, I've learned a lot over the last year of what's going on in this world. We've seen uh, coaches change their tune. Um, Even Tortorella, who I've never been a huge fan of, he's learning from this experience. And it's great to see that. But at the same time, you have an organization owned by a Latino. You have a CEO that's in a position of power in this organization. And they've been promoting, as of even a couple of days ago, I saw on their Twitter, that hockey is for everyone. And they draft someone who won't even apologize to his victim in person. I believe in forgiveness. I believe in second chances. I've made mistakes in my life. But I still believe that if you cannot apologize in person,
to your victim, as someone who's been a victim who never got an apology, and I don't care anymore. Look, I, it, it is what it is. But if you can't take that step, that says a lot about who you are as a, as a person. Right. If you write a letter to every team that you want to draft you, but you can't say any, you can't pick up the phone and have a, a neutral, have someone set up a conversation, go to someone face to face in a safe environment and say, hey, I'm sorry. That's sad. It, it is very, very, very sad. Another thing people are saying, oh, this guy's young. OK, but the thing with this whole he's young thing is when someone comes up and plots this scheme that Mitchell Miller came up with. When I was young, I did silly stuff. I, I had views that maybe, you know, were, you know, I, sh I should have known better not to have these views or, or I said things I shouldn't have said. But to plot an entire elaborate scheme to befriend somebody who has these disabilities, who is black, and then to do these things strategically, abuse, and strategically, uh, what I call hey, you know, hazing, but it really isn't hazing. It's it's worse than that. To eat candies from that came from unsanitary places. If you can do all of that at fourteen, how how are you young and dumb? All right, you can't plan and plot all these things and say, oh, I was fourteen and dumb. All right, this is not a some you know name calling that you just you're copying your parents or or you're saying a couple words to a kid, which still isn't right. Again. But if you have an elaborate plot to do all of these things at 14, but you were young and you can't play the dumb card, right? Like if, if someone can have an elaborate scheme and, and the government arrests a Ponzi scheme or whatever, you can't say, oh, I was young and no, you can't have it both ways. And that's, a, that's the, the biggest thing is you cannot say I was 14 and dumb and didn't know better. You knew better. You clearly knew better. You clearly had an elaborate plan. If you put all of those resources towards your the game of hockey, imagine how much better. And this, this player, Mitchell Miller, was a player that rose in, in stock over the last year or so, right, when playing in the USHL. But imagine if that energy was focused on hockey. He'd probably be a better hockey player. But he took time out of his day to strategically say, how can I take advantage of a black disabled boy in my school. And that's where that whole I'm too dumb and I'm too I'm too young and I do stupid stuff. Nobody was doing stupid stuff like that when I was 14, okay? Nobody or not not even stupid stuff. Nobody had the wherewithal to have such an elaborate scheme of bullying at 14 years old. But this here we are. So, look, the University of North Dakota clearly overlooked this issue, and that's on them. And the Arizona Coyotes overlooked this issue, and that's on them. They need to be responsible for drafting someone because, again, hockey is about character. We're not the NBA. We're not the NFL, the bunch of thugs, you know, they, all this stuff that hockey culture says, which I've heard personally being in hockey culture. But you draft someone who won't apologize. This is not just we're crying racism just to cry racism. We're crying disability to cry disability. This is a serious issue. This is not some, you know, oh, we're just trying to be mad to be mad. Because I don't do that. I don't make videos like this on my music channel unless something this crazy occurs. All right. This is serious and this needs to be addressed. The lack of punishment for Mitchell Miller, the lack of remorse in the lack of, of empathy for the actual victim versus he's, he's trying to get every team to, to have a sob story. I just don't believe in, and I believe in forgiveness. I believe in second chances, but I was born at night, just not last night. And this, this story just reeks. I don't know the, I, there's still things that need to unfold and we need to hear from Mitchell Miller. All right. He's dodging behind, he's hiding behind the team. And we need to hear from the Arizona Coyotes in more detail. He's, they're just, oh, well, we're, their Twitter is gone missing, right? They're paying tribute. Now, Now they're, they're doing other stuff. They're retweeting someone's retirement. And rest in peace to the, there was an Oilers, kind of a, 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 some, a local Oilers fan who, who passed. And they retweet that. And that, that's a sad story. But they're just hiding behind these, these stories that you can't hate, right? And they're not stepping up to, to really address the situation, because last month, hockey is for everyone. Hockey is, and it doesn't mean anything. And this is my, my opinion is that when you have these things, 
you have these organizations that say hockey is for everyone, right? And then this is where you're supposed to really, your, your, your actions aren't speaking like your words. And again, I appreciate the organizations and teams that passed on this guy who said, no, we're not taking this risk. But it's, it's disappointing that the Coyotes are doing this. But at the end of the day, I just want to support these young kids, these, these young women in hockey who are facing so much as I'm reading from these players who are growing up and telling their stories. These young black and Latino and Asian players who are facing racism through Canada and the United States. As a matter of fact, I face racism, but I feel like my situations were treated better than some of the people in Toronto and in Quebec telling their stories. Canada has a race problem with hockey, and they're trying to, oh, America's this, this, and that. That's a whole other story for a whole other day. But, but Canada, some of these stories out of Canada sound worse than what I went through in, in here in Connecticut, where I think I had a lot of support from my coaches and my teammates in USA Hockey. Um, but it, this, this, you know, I just feel like I want to support these children and these young adults, and if they're, you're going through anything, you're, if you're a young black player, you're a female player, you're going through something, you can get through this. There, is, there are great organizations. If you're LGBTQ+, plus, um, you know, from that community, and you are going through stuff, and you're afraid to come out, we, you can get through this. You may be going through hell right now with what you're facing on and off the ice, but you can get through this, and what will happen is, the situations that I went through that hurt me, they've only made me a better and stronger person. And if people are attacking you, there's a reason because you are destined for greatness. Nobody attacks mediocre or subpar players. OK, so if someone is attacking you because you're a young girl or a young boy or because of your sexual orientation, you're playing the sport of hockey. You can get through this. And there are many organizations that you can reach out to here on social media. That will be great. There's many organizations that you can check out the websites, the Hockey Diversity Alliance. Um, and it, it, you can do this. I'm telling you, as somebody who has been through this, my brother's been through this much worse than me, four years younger than me. But you can get through this. But it's your boy, Conservist34. That's all I got for today. Peace.